Now there aren't a lot of flies out there that have a hackle both on the front and the back, but I found one more. So let's do that one today. Howdy everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So when I was flipping through Federation of Fly Fishers, Pattern Encyclopedia, flipping through the all-purpose nymph section, I found one caught my eye. It was called the Apache Lady. Now I did a little research and found out it was created by a guy named Gordon Mankins from Phoenix, Arizona. And Gordon did have several of his flies in this book that was published in 2000. Unfortunately, Gordon passed away in 2010, but he left us with a few patterns that I think we'll carry on. And one of them is this really cool fly called the Apache Lady. Now it's very similar to another pattern. You might have heard of this one. It's called the Peacock Lady, which does also have a hackle fore and aft. It doesn't have the red bead in the middle. It has peacock curl body with a gold rib. And this one is pretty much the same fly, except without the rib. It's got a red glass bead in the middle. Now I didn't find anywhere that said when this fly was created, but I'm guessing it was probably created sometime in the last 40 to 50 years. But it's really a simple pattern, not hard to tie, and I think it's got a really cool looking profile. And the fly is in the nymph section, but to me it doesn't look like one that's going to be a fast sinker. You'd either need to fish it with some split shot or just live with the fact that it's going to, you know, be a, a fairly slow to, to moderate sinking fly. But it was a pretty fun pattern to tie. I think y'all are going to like it, but hold on one second before I move on to the tie. Did anybody notice I was wearing a couple hats during this intro? Well, I wanted to point that out to you. I've got this hat. We've had these for a while. I got a few more in today, but I also got this hat. This one, I think this is really cool. Blue and gray with the logo on right there. I'm going to be trying to set up a store sometime in the early part of 2022. So if you're interested in one of these hats or the stickers, not going to be a big event. It's just going to be a, a small little storefront that has a, a few items that uh, people have asked me about. Maybe some shirts like this too, if I can afford that. Okay, that's all about that. I think y'all are going to like tonight's pattern. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise. An Apache Lady. Pretty nifty looking pattern. I kind of like the, the looks of this guy. Now, best sizes for this are 10 to 16. I'm going to tie it on a 10. It's two extra long nymph hook. If I was tying a bunch of these to fish and just the waters that I fish, I would probably um, tie them in 12s, maybe 14s. But go ahead and put your glass bead on. It's a red glass bead. This guy right here. I don't know where I got these things. I guess I got them from D in Denver. Now I'm going to use some black thread. You can just keep that bead out of your way for now. Start your thread in the middle and then lay a little base down to the, the bend where we're going to tie in our tail. And the tail of this guy, one of my favorite materials of all time, golden pheasant tippets. I'll just take a small feather, get one that has the you know, if you want both black bars showing, get one about that size. I'll grab it by the tips. And then just get in here, cut off about 10 or so. And if you're lucky, the tips will stay aligned. So those are aligned right there and that's about the length I want. So let's catch this in. Watch the point of your hook. And I think that's going to be just fine right there. Now the next thing we're going to tie in is a rear hackle. And the recipe in this book calls for brown both fore and aft. I have seen a couple of them that had a grizzly back aft, but I mean, you could do either or. You could do grizzly in front and back. But what you want to pay attention to, this back hackle, make it, you know, about as not much bigger than a hook gap. You really don't want to close up that gap. So I pulled that around and I'm going to strip it off right there and I'm going to catch it in right in the back here with the concave side toward the hook if I can pull that off, which usually you can. Let's see, got a little bit of bare stem showing so that first wrap won't be laying fibers down and that will be just fine. Okay, I don't need my thread that far forward. I'm only going to do maybe three wraps back here that we'll be putting down some hackle. But do whatever you think looks about right. Let's try three and see what that gets us. Stay out of the way there. Well, that's three. I think we can do one more, but I don't want to get too greedy because I might start closing that hook gap up. 
But I think we'll be fine. Let's back this thread off just a couple of turns. Get it right back here. Now catch off this hackle. Now I'm going to snip the, this excess off right here. And I might have a few fibers pointing forward that I can just go ahead and trim right here. Probably don't need to. You can prop them back up with the peacock curl, but uh, it might just make it a little bit cleaner to go ahead and trim them right there. And there is an oops. It looks like I slit a little bit of that thread there. You can see it fuzzing up. We can recover from that. Just use a few extra wraps right here to work through that. We'll be fine. Now the next component is going to be the rear half of the body. And it's peacock curl. I'm going to take two strands and just catch them in. Keep that bead out of the way for now. All right. Now, yeah, we'll catch them in back to the hackle. And then I'm gonna leave my thread maybe in the middle of that. I'm not gonna go envision the bead in the middle of the hook. That's about where it's gonna be. So that's where I'm gonna stop wrapping that peacock curl. So just go ahead and wrap this up. I don't know, five, six, seven turns, whatever it's gonna take you to get your body up here to where we wanna catch it off. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough for our rear half. Let's catch this off with two wraps. And when we cut this peacock curl, we're gonna save it because we'll use the same piece for the front half of the body. Now what I've been doing right here is just putting a few extra wraps, build a little dam right here. I don't know how important it is. I don't think this bead is gonna slide on us. But putting a little dam right here is not going to hurt just to make sure your bead will, you know, kind of sit up on it like that. I think we're going to be fine right there. And my whip finish tool is not really big enough to get over that. So I will just do a one by hand right here. Now let's get our bead situated right there and then start some thread right in front of it. And you might want to do the same thing. Just put a small little dam right here. I don't think it's a real big deal. But let's take our thread up here where we're going to catch in this peacock curl again. These same two pieces. And I'm just going to catch them in right up here. Now I'll leave my thread about in the middle of it. Now I'll just wrap these up. And the front about the same as the back. If if you think that looks right. Okay, let's catch this off of two wraps. We only have one more component after this, and that's more hackle. This time, get a feather that is gonna give you a hackle about the size for the hook. So this is size 10. I want this, you know, these fibers to be a little bit longer than the hook point. So I think that's gonna be fine right there. It's a nymph or a, you know, a sunken fly, so I don't really want a big, huge hackle on it. Don't really want it to be as, you know, one and a half times the hook gap. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna catch it in the concave side toward the hook again, but I'm gonna strip off a few extra of these fibers on the, the far side. Okay, I think that's going to work right there. Got that stem caught in with six wraps or so. Let's go ahead and bend that up and snip the stub off right here. Now we want to wrap this and probably the same number of wraps as we had in the back. You don't want to over hackle this. If you aired to any side, I would air to the side of probably under hackle it. Let's see, I think we can get away with one more. Let's go one more here. All right, that's gonna be enough. And do I wanna snip this excess off before I push it back or not? 
I think in this case, yes, let's do. You know what? No, let's don't. Because it might leave me a stem if I did that, a little stub. So I'm going to just pull them all back and take a few wraps right here. I don't want them swept back, so I'm not pulling them too far back. I'm not taking the thread wraps too far. Just far enough to get them perpendicular and to get room for a, a whip finish on this head. So that's a decent head right there. Let's go ahead and whip finish it real quick and then we'll take care of that extra feather there. Okay, let's go ahead and snip this and see if we have any cleanup. Hey, we could trim this a little bit, but I think we're gonna be fine. So I just want these to stick out right here and a drop of head cement and the Apache lady is done. So pretty neat pattern. I'd say this has a pretty cool profile through the water. It's gonna have that green peacock sheen with the added touch of the red glass bead. So that's it everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.